So it's Friday, Inside of Ties, my favorite day of the week, because I know that we're coming towards the weekend, that means it's going to be big sneaker releases, but Inside of Ties is about the news that I missed during the week. Now, I did miss a lot of news, I just didn't write as much as I could have, but there are some really good articles on the website, so make sure you go to arch-usa.com, check out the articles on the website. Uh, the things that I missed this week that I thought you guys should see, and as usual, I'll try to keep it under four to five minutes, and I may go over, but I got to play around with some of this stuff. Um, you can't tell what brand is over here to my side. Uh, it's Vans, right? And Jay Howe. You guys have seen Bob's Burgers. Uh, this is one of the cooler landing pages that I've seen on a website. And pretty much when you have these kind of landing pages where they do the right things, you can end up staying on them for a long time. So if I click start building uh, the Bob's Burger art, um, what does he call artist, uh, basically lays out this design with Vans. And I can choose uh, hairstyles, which that one looks like it's got glasses on. And... Of course, I'm going to go with black hair, even though my hair is kind of brown, but I'm also bald, so you can't really see that much. I'm brown. I don't know what shade of black dude this is, but it's a cartoon, so we just have to go with it. Uh, I'm, I'm right there. I'll take that. But you can see, you can sit here and play around with this all day. I actually like, oh, I like that. So I'm going to pick that. And you see you have men's and women's options. And then we look at the pants. And of course, I'm going with the olive colored pants. And then I'm trying to get to the point where I can see what this looks like. I don't own a pair of Vans. I'm not going to sit here in front like I own a pair of Vans. I have been looking at buying a pair of Vans. Why? Because they look cool. But I don't skateboard and I try to kind of stay true to the things that I've done. But these actually look kind of dope. Especially if they weren't like leopard print and they were actually like brown leather. Then yeah. So we got that, and then, of course, for the fall weather here, I'm going with the beanie. And let's see what we come up with. A setting. I'm not in the alleyway. I don't skate, but I do chill in really nice places. So, boom. There we go. We're going to finish it. And I get the look, and it's pretty cool. So you could actually download this, or you can do what? Shop your look. Very cool landing page for Vans. And you go in, and you get the entire layout. And the beautiful thing is... This jacket is only, oh wow, it's $59.50. Now I messed up the whole show because I'm probably going to go and buy this jacket. But I said I wasn't going to buy any more jackets that weren't sustainable. So I can't buy that. Let's see. Polyester water resistant. Polyester means it's going to be pieces of plastic potentially when I wash it. Ah, I'll come back to it. I hate to do that to you, Vans, but nobody's paying me to do this stuff. I'm just doing this on my own. And this inside of tie, so let's keep going. Uh, Vans has this very Christ-like figure of Usain Bolt. And they're celebrating the 10 years. Um, I think it was Sean or D at um, Obsessive Sneaker Disorder. They said exactly what I had been thinking for a very long time. Vans had the greatest athlete in the world for 10 plus years and completely underutilized him. You can give him a god look now, but you didn't treat him that way when you had him this whole time and now he's retired. That's all I have to say about that. Let's keep going. All right, so we bounce back and we get to Nike. Nike had, for those of you that know, I do resale and I do use it for data and for research. Nike had the best basketball release they've had in three years. Um, especially with a major release that went out to a lot of locations. You do have like the Harlem Fashion Roller Bronze and things like that that have released in the basketball arena. But by far and away, the best releases have been in Kyrie's. As a matter of fact, the Kyrie 1 and 2 were in the top 10 selling shoes when they released. And they've consistently done decent. But last weekend, the SpongeBob release dropped and sold out as you can see I'm over here on sneakers and it's sold out throughout Nike but more important for people like me and other people who do resale man this shoe has been ridiculous in resale so we go to StockX and it's still still selling for way above the $130 point so you do have some that have dropped down and then you don't have a whole lot of it so it's not that great anymore I was wrong but 
the thing sold out everywhere. I think the hype of it has died down. But that's what StockX has done. It's kind of democratized the whole process of sneaker buying, where if you have a shoe that hits resale, it really only stays there for a limited amount of time, probably close to a week, and then it kind of just dies down because there's so much coming out. In specific, it's dying down because tomorrow the satin uh, black toes come out, right? Yeah, I think so. Anyway, let's jump into this one, which is Steve Madden. Keep snapping up these brands that are digitally native brands. And this is important because if you're starting a footwear company and you're like, man, what's my exit strategy? And I don't want to stay with this for the next 20 years now. I don't know why you start something and then give up on it so quickly. Um, if you were looking for an exit strategy for your footwear company and you did it the right way, Great's brand was acquired by Steve Madden which we know Steve Madden makes the knockoff shoes, so it's good that they got Grace Brand because Grace Brand, they're doing their own thing. Now, they do have some shoes that look like other shoes, but every brand does. Grace Brand is a solid acquisition for Steve Madden, but they also picked up a clothing line for women called BB Dakota. You gotta go and look that up, man. I found this on Yahoo. I think it's on Footwear News, so you could peep and kind of dig into that a little bit more on your own. Like I said, Inside the Ties, I'm just doing a wrap-up, so I'm going to wrap this up with the last topic of discussion. I wrote an article that's getting like serious traction on the website on Col well it wasn't on Columbia Sports but it's on outdoor retailers. The question was asked by someone at Columbia Sports, why aren't uh, black people considered a market for outdoor footwear and apparel? And I wrote this article. You know what? I'll put it right here, so it should pop up. If you're on a desktop, it'll pop up. If you're on a phone, it won't pop up. You're gonna have to go in the description and you'll be able to click the link to go to that article. I wrote an article on it and explained in detail that the outdoor brands are failing to actually market to everyone. Um, but I'm asking you guys, what do you think about this shoe to shift? I think it's actually a really good looking shoe. I think they could do some things with it, but the simple idea that the person they decided to put in the marketing seat for it was the DJ Zed. It doesn't do anything for me personally good looking shoe but i'd love to see a campaign that hits closer to home for me and that's not saying that a campaign for a black dude has to be different it needs to be a campaign that resonates with me show me some people that are actually hiking give me some nice videos people talking about the way the shoe feels show me some really dope outfits with this shoe and you may have a guy that gets converted and actually buys it matter of fact let's see and it's only 130 dollars come on they actually did a good job and I'm going to keep saying actually because I'm actually about to stop this video. I'll see you guys next week. I hope everybody's doing fantastic. If you're going after the satin ones tomorrow, be safe. Be very safe. That's all I got to say about that. Peace.